Okay, we're back. Um, we left off at um, after palmistry. So right here I have a little section for reading tea leaves and how to cut the tea bag and you know the different spots and the different steps and stuff. And what you do um, is the symbols that you find depending on where they are. You go back to the symbols page and find out what the different symbols mean. Um, got different types of scrying, like water scrying, mirror scrying, cloud scrying, fire scrying, that sort of thing. I got my runes and some rune spreads right here. Uh, numerology over here. We got the minor arcana pentacles, minor arcana uh, wands, which I'm going to draw some wands, minor arcana uh, swords, which I'm going to draw some daggers right there. And minor arcana chalices. I'm going to draw a cup. Um, we got major arcana, which is like death and the wheel and judgment and stuff. Got some spreads right here. Some spreads right there. Um, more spreads right here. Right here is going to be astrology houses about them. And I have that all written out. I just need to copy it in here. Got Aries, Taurus, different astrology signs. Um, I got Gemini, got a rough sketch of some of the pictures, Cancer the Crab, Leo, Libra, Scorpio, Virgo on the other side and stuff, yeah. Got my Banshee, and my Dragon, which I'm about ready to write their information down. Got my Dwarf, that reminds me of one of the Seven Dwarves. Got my little Elf. Got a fairy and gargoyle, which is my favorite. For some, well, one of my favorites. I like gargoyles just because um, I don't know. They're about them are, is misleading. Like people think that they're the they are these scary creatures and that they're demons or something when really they're protectors and guardians, and they look scary um, to look frightening towards the thing that things that they're protecting you from. So I actually think they're really great. Uh, the Kraken, which um, e there's been some Krakens that look kind of like this humanoid sea serpent thing and weird things. Um, I prefer the squid version of the Kraken just because I'm a big um, Pirates of the Caribbean fan and in the movie uh, Davy Jones, his pet kraken is a giant squid, so I like the idea of a giant squid. Um, a griffin, almost forgot the name. I'm gonna put sprites, or no, never, never mind, this is a leprechaun, but I'm holding off because I really suck at drawing humans. Um, like, if you see here on my mermaid, I don't even draw the fingers because I suck at fingers. Um, the face I did actually better than I usually do, but I think that's just because I don't have very much detail on her. But that's my mermaid. Um, my phoenix. And then here's going to be the fawn or satyr. I'm going to put sprites right here, but I'm debating whether to put um, sprites or um, succubus. So because sprites are kind of like fairies, but they're not, so I don't know if it would be kind of redundant to put sprites in there. Um, my unicorn, which is based off of the last unicorn, the, the unicorn from that movie. So if you know the movie, then you know which unicorn I'm talking about. Um, vampires up here, and werewolves down here. Got totem animals, and this is the concept that I was going to do with the H sort of thing. Like have half the H really long, and then the other half kind of short for um, uh, honoring the dead. You know how I was saying the H was going to come down here and then go up there. So uh, the different types of totem animal thingies are uh, your you have different totem types of totem animals. You have your birth totem, which um, is sort of like your guardian totem. It stays with you from birth to death. Um, you have your power animal totem, which is almost like your teacher um, totem. 
It stays with you through life, but it teaches you what you were supposed to learn in this lifetime. Um, so my birth totem is the fish or the salmon, and my power totem is the cougar. Um, your animal helper totem is um, that come and go as you need as the need arises. So they're just um, there to help in certain situations. Um, messenger totems are there to give you messages um, from the divine, from family, from you know the other side, basically. And then you have medicine animal totems, which you can call upon um, to heal people, like emotionally, physically, um, during different parts of their life and stuff. So, and then I'm gonna have lists of all the different totem animals, and I think I'm gonna have like 50 different totem animals, from like bear to insect to I don't know, like different stuff. Um, this one is. This page is going to be astral projection, which I still need to read up on, but I'm going to put astral projection right there. Um, past life recall, which I'm still reading this book about past lives um, and how to meditate on them. Healing and remedies, which I'm still in the process of coloring, but um, like I said in my other video, I was going to redo this page because I didn't like the way it was, so I put the title up here and then um, I put the it's a wreath that you put ribbons on and make it look like a pentacle um, charming pixie charming pixie flora made one um, I got some prisms um, drying herbs mortar and pestle um, some bottles of oil some incense you know aromatherapy that sort of thing um, I got crystal on a pedestal and a pyramid for pyramid healing and stuff but um, we got the different chakras what each chakra means, it's done put in chakra healing um, about crystal healing how to use a pendulum for like scrying and, um, and for figuring out if the chakra is or chakra is closed or not um, I'm going to actually draw different grids so I can actually use the grids in my book and not have to, like, I don't know, get cloth or redraw it on other ones. So I got um, a three-pointed grid or a six-pointed grid. Over here is going to be a four-pointed grid or an eight-pointed grid. Um... And then over here is going to be a five or ten pointed grid. Um, on the three and six one, I'll probably um, add nine on nine points, so I can either do a hex, you know, a triangle, a hexagon, or a nine pointed grid. Um, and then my different remedies for stuff. This is aging, and I got this from a few different sites: Alzheimer's, anemia, which I have, and stuff. So I got all that planned out. I just need to write all this stuff down. Um, and then I passed it. Sorry. I found this book at the library. Goodness. And I'll tell you what it's called here in a second. Come on, book. There we go. Okay. Um, I got this book. called Home Herbal, A Practical Family Guide to Making Herbal Remedies for Common Ailments. And in this book, it shows you how to like make massage oils and ointments and infused oils and um, compresses and poultices, um, tinctures, tonic wines, that sort of thing. Um, infused teas and things like that which I thought was amazing because you know every herbal book that I find is always just like a book of remedies it doesn't actually teach you how to make the remedies it just says oh use a tincture for this or you know make a decoction for that or whatever 
but it doesn't actually tell you how to make the tinctures or whatever. So I got that book and I found it and I was really excited. Um, it does have some remedies in it, but um, I'm going to actually go to school for that. So I got all the syrups and infusions and stuff from that book in here. Um, and then on this page is going to be about familiars. And then I have blessings and prayers for the next few page, which is just like meal blessings and seasonal prayers or prayers for certain things. Um, I'm going to put family traditions, like Wicca-based traditions, on a few pages. And then I'm going to leave some open pages for messages. So like... Before I die, I'll write a message on here for future generations, and then whoever I pass it down to when, before they die or whenever they feel like it, they can write a message for future generations in these sections. Um, my spells and potions page, which I don't have any spells and potions in here yet, so... Um, but I did map it out where I'm going to put everything and the types of spells I'm going to put in there. Um, I w Once I put stuff in it, though, I will not be showing that page because that is just a little too personal. Um, those are my personal creations, so if I show it, then it kind of loses its luster, if you know what I mean. But I did the title for my family my magical family tree of magical and non magical kin. So it'd be like my blood family tree, but I'll mark out, you know, oh she was a witch or he was a witch or whatever. Which I'm pretty sure I'm the first witch, but you know, my friends um my friend is a witch and um, you know, so my, my other friend is a Buddhist, but still it's like, you know, magical person ish. So that's pretty much all I, ooh, excuse me, that's all I got so far. Um, but, I mean, it seems like a lot of progress to me, but I know it's not. And before I run out of time, I don't know if I'll get to talk about the Waldo Kenya fire. That might have to be a part three, but this is my new wa wand that I made from an ash branch that I found. And my na my actual name is Ashley, my first name, um, which means from the ash tree or from the ash field, like a, fe a forest of ash trees. And um, my Celtic totem tree is the ash tree, so I thought that was kind of funny. And if you know anything about the ash tree, it is the tree of life, which is, I think the name is Yggdrasil. The Nordic um, tree of life that is an ash tree. So I actually burned some runes by using a needle and I bent it and I heated it up in a candle flame and I just burned some um, scorch marks in it. Left the handle on it and then I tied on, I think this is a spotted owl. Um, feather that I actually got in a mask making kit. Um, I got a clear quartz little point on it. Got a couple of um, seashells that naturally have holes in them from my trip to Myrtle Beach. And then I have, um, you know, the white and black for God and Goddess, and then all the different colors of the chakras and of the rainbow and stuff. So that's my wand, and I still need to, I guess, anoint it, you could say, but I like to, anything with wood, I like to coat it in this oil, because I feel like it's like um, putting on a glaze, it protects it, um, practically and magically. So I still need to put that on there, but it's pretty much done. So yeah, I'm going to be using this one from now on, because I didn't, I don't know, the other one, I had originally made it for um, Harry Potter, like just oh, I like Harry Potter, I want to have a wand type, you know, fangirl thing. So it didn't really have any magical value. So I made a different wand. And I actually know what the wood is. So, um, I'm going to end it here. And in the third part, is just going to be about the wall. Well, I probably won't even make it a part three. I'll just say, you know, stuff about Wild Oak Canyon Fire. Um, and my experience. So I'll see you guys later. Blessed be.